picking up, so Mike is hot. He's like all y'all. Alrighty, thank you guys for coming out so much to Bootstrap Maryland. Go ahead, Thank you guys. We got tornadoes. We got terrorists today. You guys all came through this. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can hear That's because you guys have been, you know, head deep in your startups, which is what you should be doing, right? It's like everybody else here. I'm getting this Yeah. So um, before I get started with anything, I actually, you know, the reason why or the thing that we have here is amazing, and you know, we've got this wonderful food and these drinks and this great space and setup, and it's all because of Pillsbury providing this space and this setup for us. And um, Pillsbury Law is actually my law firm, so they've done. Uh, all of my legal work. As a matter of fact, Steve Kaplan here is going to talk for a second and talk about that, but he's the actual, the, the attorney at Pillsbury that I directly work with. Um, so I'm really excited to, to have him here to talk for just a second and also just to be here. So thanks, Steve. If you want to just give a quick uh, 60 seconds about Pillsbury, that'd be awesome. I don't know if I need a full 60 seconds, but yeah, as Jared said, Pillsbury is a law firm. We have an office here, office in Tyson's Corner, and another, I think, 14 offices nationally and internationally locally in which I'll be most interested in. We have a practice that specializes in kind of the full life cycle for startups from incorporation to form licensing contracts and you know customer contracts, angel investments, VC investments, and then if all goes well, we handle M&A exits, M&A acquisitions of your competition, and IPOs if you do that. You know, we have a program designed to work with very early companies where we can offer you guys you know, office space in either this location or in Northern Virginia, use of our conference rooms as needed, off-the-clock conversations with some of our real senior partners, and discounted rates generally. You know, we're happy to talk to any of you guys. I'll definitely be around afterwards, so come find me. Are there any, are there any other attorneys here from Pillsbury? Anybody? Raise your hand if you're with Pillsbury. Not many folks. I'm not an attorney, but I'm in the program, and Steve is my attorney. And Nicholas Paulson, talk to him as well as, uh, as an example of what it's like to be working in this building and the startups all the time over at Pillsbury. Um, the other thing I want, the other group I wanted to thank is some volunteers who made this possible. Uh, Jeff, where are you, Jeff? Jeff Tom. You might still be out there ending our registrations, but Jeff helps with this event and with a lot of other events. Uh, that I've worked on and a lot of other people have. So thank you, Jeff, and thank you all the other folks that, that volunteered and really made this possible. Um, also, we need to spread the word about this. So you can see up there it says BootstrapMD. That's the hashtag for this. So if you use Flickr, if you use Twitter, please, uh, please do feel free to use that. And uh, next, I just want to introduce Paul. Paul here is the co-organizer for this event. Um, and he'll be on the panel. So I'm going to be moderating tonight. And all these folks will be participating. I'll introduce them in a second. But uh, I'm going to hand it over to Paul, but I want to just you know, give a little background on Paul Singh. Um, I actually had him as a panelist a bunch of times before, and I realized that his message kind of just jives so much with the group that it made sense to really you know, join the you know, join the sort of formally so the two of us can, can put these on. Right now, he's an EIR, which if you're in Silicon Valley, you know this acronym always means, but it's just a fancy way of saying an entrepreneur in residence, which is a kind of cool title. After you sell your company, oftentimes you get that title working for a venture capital firm where you get to sort of incubate your next idea and help their companies. And he does that with the founder of Rackspace. Uh, his company was bought by a Rackspace company, City Voice, last fall, or last something, about a year ago. <laughs> yeah, a year ago here, that night, it was like like sold. After seven months, he sold a business for a pretty good pretty good deal, Filtro. And right now, he's got like, I don't know, three or four other startups that are going on. And he's also a mentor at 500 Startups, a, uh, uh, a VC fund also that just, an early stage VC fund that just started in the Valley with Dave McClure. Um, so, Paul Sankel. Cool. Thanks, man. So, uh, for those of you that don't know Jerry, he, uh, he obviously founded the group here. He uh, uh, recently sold his consulting company this summer, and then now is the founder of Wayfind and uh, raised some money from Five Hundred Startups. We're actually both mentors. Uh, so thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. And then, uh, um, actually, can I have a sure. Yeah. Cool. So, just after, so how many of you guys are working a full-time day job? <laughs> That's not a startup. That's nothing to do with yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, like a work regular like job. A boring stuff. <laughs> All right. That's actually That's the government contract. So how many of you guys are working full time for a startup? I feel like a third. And how many of you guys are like double dipping? Those are my favorite. How many of your bosses know about it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Raise your hand if you're in that group and your boss knows about it. <laughs> wow. Nice. Um, so, 
<laughs> do, we, do we have any students here? Students? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and how many of you guys have your own big idea? <laughs> Only one? Everybody, come on. <laughs> okay, more than one. Um, and then, how, do, how many of you guys are like biz people? So not technology people, not coders, but like business people. Okay, on the other side, how many coders or engineers? Okay, look around, you guys have to meet each other. <laughs> That's cool. Except the ones that work for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, how, how many uh, how many of you are here to sell something to startups? Vendors. <laughs> yeah. Buyers. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be hard to deny it, but awesome. Cool. All right. Um, so startups are kind of interesting businesses. Um, you know, service companies they make revenue right from day one, and product companies. Um, you know, they, they're usually responding to a market need to, to build something that, you know, kind of the, the world already wants. Um, but startups are interesting because they're not making money right from the beginning, and they're producing some, they don't actually know what they're producing, and they don't actually know if there's a market. So it's this kind of nebulous, very high risk, potentially high reward, but usually high loss um, kind, of, kind of business. And usually what that means is, is um, it's not really a business at all. Uh, and most of us, when we, we start these, these things, these ideas, that really are just ideas, um, we usually fail, and you can either fail and then have to move on to working for the man again, or you can fail and iterate, fail and do something else with that same group of people, maybe with money raised, maybe with your savings, maybe with just your credit card debt, whatever it happens to be, but you have the chance to sort of change direction. And that's what tonight's event is about. It's about getting to plan B before you fail in everybody else's eyes. I fail in my own eyes every day, all the time, with ideas I try that don't work. And you have to get comfortable with that. And this group here is a lot more comfortable with it probably than I am. They have a lot more successes. And we've got some just really, really amazing people up here who are going to talk about how they got to their next big idea and then their next big idea, and eventually the one that really found a market and that really, really succeeded. Um, the order of this event is basically each of the folks is actually sort of going to go down, except at the end we'll switch up a little bit, in terms of each person's going to give a little bit of a presentation. Uh, Paul's going to kind of talk about the problem and the challenge with you know, when you start your company and you know, the idea of you know, your first idea and how you get to the next one. Um, TK here, who I'll introduce in a second, um, is, is gonna talk about, um, is gonna talk about you know, kind of in the early stage when you have a lot of different ideas, how you sort of get past that. And Puman and Aaron will talk about sort of in the later stage of how you, you, know, how you really change paths once you've really found the business that works for you. And they'll all be sharing stories. And each of them will talk for about three to five minutes We'll have questions kind of up here, and you'll also get a chance to ask questions. So again, it'll be brief presentation, questions from everybody, brief presentation, questions from everybody, that sort of format. Um, and, to, and to introduce everybody, um, TK here, Tahi Kader, uh, he goes by TK, uh, he actually came down from New York, everybody else here is for the most part local, although I guess maybe not me these days, I'm not sure if I qualify, uh, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, but TK came down from New York, and he actually, when he was in college, he sold his first business to Plaxo. That's kind of a pretty big deal. Uh, actually, one of the founders from Plaxo is here, somewhere in here. There you go. So he, that man was involved in that transaction we brought out here tonight. Um, and then TK, you know, after being in the startup world for a bit, he decided to kind of work for the man or work for a different man. He worked for the hedge fund, for a hedge fund for about three years. Then he decided he wanted to do something meaningful with his life. And he left that and uh, started not one, not two, but three businesses. And they're all kind of in the earlier stage right now. They're, they're getting some traction. Um, but that's kind of where he's at right now. Um, Kuman, next to him, Kuman Red Bar. Um, three years ago, he started uh, ClearSpring, which many of you knew as sort of that widget company. He's going to talk about how he's not he's not in the exact same space right now. He's doing something very different. But uh, excuse me, not three years ago, four years ago. Uh, prior to that, he was at CMU. He was like many folks that at CMU, you know those those. You, you're an engineer. Or you're an engineer and rockstar. Everybody I meet from CMU that's in engineering is amazing. I always try to hire those folks, just not away from him. Um, and their, their site has actually over a billion users, so that's like more than Yahoo. Uh, so listen to this man about, about what to do with those kinds of numbers. And last but not least, we have Aaron Vitalian, who is the CTO and co-founder of Living Social, uh, which many of you have probably heard of. Um, three years ago, he started that business uh, along with a bunch of other sort of, it was doing other stuff than, than deals then. Uh, and they spun through a lot of different ideas.